Hey, what's up everybody? Rob here from Ram Studio Comics. Welcome back. So in today's video, I'm actually sharing a lesson from my new course, or my newest course, How to Draw Comic Style Art from Sketch to Rendering. It's been off to an amazing start, but I figured I would share uh, one of these lessons with you, get your feedback. I'd love to know what you think. And if you like this content, you can get the full course. There'll be links in the description box below, both for my Gumroad, uh, Skillshare, even Udemy, but they changed the way the coupon codes work for that. So if you got any questions about that, let me know. So hopefully you enjoy this lesson. I'd love to know what you think, and let's jump on in. Okay, and for this example, I want to show you the difference from, uh, well, I just want to do one that's actually more angular. So in the previous example, we did an eye that's a bit more organic. Uh, you know, just remember, organic is going to be sweeping, curvature lines, and then angular, obviously, just angles, sharper points, things like that. I think that's also important to think about and practice uh, when doing your comic art because it's one of the um, you know things that can help create a lot of variation within your work. So what I'm going to do here is just for, first start off with uh, you know creating some lines, but I'm going to think a little bit more angular. I'm, gonna, I'm still going to use a little bit of curvature, so I don't want you to get the impression that it's all of one or all of the other. Uh, but I'm just thinking in terms of what might be more predominant. So I'm still going to try to get a slope to the eye. Uh, somewhat still of similar shape overall but just uh, a lot more squinted or squatty and as I render this out again I will try to bring out uh, more angles so something like that so there's the you know perimeter shape you know and then as far as uh, the same rules kind of apply you know a nice heavy shape for the eyelashes up top and I'm actually going to try to encompass this eye with even more um, more eyelashes. So really basically tracing out the shape. So what happens here is by contrast, by placing such a, a heavy top eyelash and bottom eyelash, you, you really bring out the white of the eye more. So it's, uh, again, it's a contrasting element and you can play around with the intensity in which you use this effect. So you can really thicken these up you know, I'm, I'm going to omit the uh, separation from the eyelash to the, the width of the eyelid that you typically see. You definitely see in more realistic depictions. Uh, again, this is just something where I might want to simplify that. Uh, as you draw an eye a lot further away, you'll definitely omit that. But uh, again, I want to play around with uh, simplifications of the concepts. That's another thing that's really important to do in comics because it... Uh, it just makes your life a little bit easier uh, and I think a lot of times simplicity uh, reads well to the viewer uh, it's not so um, so much for them to interpret so it's it becomes very much a quick read and uh, can generally be more well received so just like that we've got the initial shapes and play around with these obviously this is just our kind of rough starting point but again I want to really try to bring out angles as I meet these lines together and I'll definitely do that as I render it now obviously the iris we're not going to use an angle for there but I am going to try to make this a little bit different of a look so it's also important that you play around with you know your expressions and the alignment of certain features so I'm going to bring the pupil kind of behind the top eyelid just a little bit it gives kind of this, you know, sometimes sleepier uh, expression or uh, anger. You know, whenever we're angry, we typically might tilt our head down and uh, look up at something. Uh, it just seems to be pretty prevalent in comics, obviously. You know, that kind of angry up look that you might get. So putting in some glares to make it look wet. But again, can't really do a whole lot of... I wouldn't try to uh, explain this shape with <laughs> angles obviously um, but then I can also keep nudging this around so maybe I want to bring up this bottom line a bit more make it a little bit more of a steep angle something like that and then for the eyebrow I'm gonna again bring it over at an angle like this but I'm gonna bring it closer to the eye here and what that'll do is again reinforce that look that they're kind of angry and looking up, up under their brow kind of thing. So I'll start off very sketchy, just get all the 
major components of this in place and then as I render this out I'll throw in these tips and make the uh, eyelashes look more impressive so you see this is a little bit more of a simplistic uh, version really than the other one you know we don't have that separation of the uh, the eyelash and the lid that width that you see uh, it'll be a bit more angular and squatty kind of easier to draw because of that really uh, me personally I always find angles easier to draw than than curves so it's a, a little probably quicker I would imagine but let's go ahead and soft erase this and redraw it and bring it out and see how it turns out okay I won't uh, really explain this process since we've already talked about it in a couple of videos uh, but I will say that variation is really key so uh, that's really why I wanted to show you two different eyes is because I do lots of variation I draw eyes over and over I draw mouths noses over and over so I wanted to share a little bit of that with you through these lessons basically that it doesn't just happen by drawing it right the first time in fact you may get uh, you know a good sense of your art or uh, I don't even want to say that you may get a, a little bit of a confidence boost when you draw something right one time so you get like a really good eye or really good face or whatever uh, but it's not until you draw it over and over again uh, and you change the variables that you start to learn about what it is that you consider your style. Uh, and that's always evolving, that's always changing. I'm always looking for the next best thing to incorporate into my arsenal and my style, essentially. Uh, you know, that's, that's what makes art exciting. You're constantly improving, you're constantly developing. Uh, when that ha stops happening, then I think that you really need to challenge yourself and then jump out of your, uh, your safety zone and do something entirely different. So again, always challenge yourself, always keep it exciting, uh, and you'll more than likely always grow from that. It's, uh, it's pretty hard to stop drawing when you're excited about what you're doing. So let me know what you think of these lessons. More content is on the way. As always, keep drawing, keep having fun, and bye for now.